Hi, fellow classmates, instructors, and friends. This is Ginny, your humble TCM student who knows absolutely nothing about this field, but wanted to start this audio journal to record everything TCM. If you would like to join my study group as well, please come learn with me. And let's get healthier by healing our bodies from the inside out holistically together. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to the Kuko community. I want to start this platform to create the safe space for everyone who is new to TCM or intermediate or even at expert level to share their thoughts, their notes, their learnings, their recipes, everything. So everyone can learn how to live a healthier lifestyle. I'm pretty sure for a lot of you who do know me, this is quite shocking for you. It is also shocking for me as well, because I'm quite shy and I am an introvert. So for me to do something like this is completely out of my comfort zone. But I do feel like this is definitely bigger than just me. Why I say that is because with trying to spread traditional Chinese medicine, philosophy is just so complex. There's so many factors that go with traditional Chinese medicine. That's why it's always been a mystery for even Chinese people. If I don't even understand it, how can I expect other people to understand it? I have to say, even my parents doesn't even understand it. And I'm not even going to go into my grandparents because obviously <laughs> they would have no clue. I have been told all my life to do things because it's good for me and it's healthy without understanding why. I'm pretty sure you guys who have heard of these uh, statements or questions probably already have a hot water dispenser at home. I sure do. It has been ingrained into my mind that I need to drink hot water all the time. <laughs> Even if it's 30 degrees outside, you have to drink room temperature water. You can't drink cold water. These are definitely some of the things that I'm pretty sure you guys have heard in your household. I definitely have heard a lot in mine. Along with these types of questions, as I grow older and I grew to be more health conscious, especially after COVID hit, health has been top of mind like no tomorrow. It made me question, okay, what can I do to make myself healthier so I won't catch the virus? A lot of questions have flooded my mind. If my throat is itchy, what, what can I drink so I could offset this itchy throat? What can I do if I might come down with a cold? Then I started thinking back, oh, my mom actually used to give me this dried fruit that I should soak in water and just drink it multiple times just to get the essence from it so I won't have that scratchy throat the next day. All of these things started flooding into my mind once it starts, like it just won't stop. <laughs> I wanted to find the answers to these and want to understand why my mom did those things, why she would say those things, also why I need to take those things that she suggested. Obviously, you know, took it upon myself and went to the internet. When I started Googling, um, a lot of things would come up in Chinese. It sucks because I lost <laughs> the ability to read Chinese. I could only read really simple characters. I couldn't read anything that was too difficult. If things were to be more medical, I would definitely not understand. Language was definitely a barrier. That's one. And two, I was like, okay, if language is a barrier, maybe I could search for it on YouTube to see if I could understand it that way. However, if you try to type stuff up in English, it's hard to find that because majority of this stuff is only available in Chinese. So now I'm like stuck trying to find answers. Then I tried to find podcasts, which I did, 
and they were great. They were definitely good openers to understanding traditional Chinese medicine a lot more. But a lot of the terminologies that they use sometimes were too difficult. I'm not in this field. I am not a professional. So I took it upon myself to take an online course to learn the fundamentals of traditional Chinese medicine. When I took that course, thankfully, it was in English. Let me tell you, things started to click in. Things started to link. In my mind, I was just like, holy shit. This is unreal. And this is something that I feel like people should understand themselves as well. Because why wouldn't you want to understand your body better on a deeper level? I hope my future journal logs are going to make sense so everyone would be able to comprehend and implement tips and tricks into their own lifestyle, even if it's just a little bit. I'm sure it would go a long way. With this long intro, part of the reason why I wanted to start this audio journal links back to my background story as well. For those of you who don't know me and for those of you who do know me, man, I'm about to get super vulnerable for the very first time and I don't know how it's going to go. It might be super awkward, it might be really intense, but I feel like if I was to be vulnerable and to be really honest with you guys, that's how we build trust and that's how we're going to build this community. It's going to be no bullshit. It's going to be all truths and pure honesty. That's all you're going to ever get from me. If it's not a truth, then probably at that moment in time, I probably thought it was true and I probably made a mistake and I would apologize for that <laughs> because, hey, I am still learning just like everyone else. You make mistakes, you assume things and it's OK. Without further ado, let's jump in to my background story. First off, my family and I immigrated here back in 1995. I was around seven to eight years old at that time. Learning English was definitely our first priority. Being at that age, I was very naive. I thought you just have to go up to people and ask if you could play with them and they will be like, yeah, sure, let's play. But that was very different from how I had it in my mind and how it actually panned out. What really happened in reality was I would go up to kids from my class asking if I could play with them in Chinese to the Chinese kids. They would reject me and laugh at me because I don't know English. Going through that on a daily basis was not fun. I wanted to learn English faster than anyone because I didn't want to be bullied. My parents would try their best to immerse uh, my brother and I into the Western culture by letting us watch TV all the time, as long as it's in English, getting us to read, bringing us to movies at Markville Mall <laughs> back then when they still had a theater. But my family is not a... We're not well off or anything. For them, they go to work quite often. Even my dad had to go back to Hong Kong to, you know, take on jobs because it was hard for him to find jobs here that would pay well to support us. Having my parents work all the time, for them, they are loving parents. You know, they're trying to make enough money so we would have the necessities in life and just them bringing my brother and I over is already a huge step for them. But because they are not educated parents, there are a lot of things that I had to figure out myself. As I grow a little older, from elementary school being bullied to going into high school and getting accepted by my friends that are Chinese, it was, it was new to me. That was completely new to me. I've never been accepted by 
friends for so many years, it felt like at that time. And then after high school, I went through a rebellious phase. I was no angel. I would go out all the time. I would sleep very late. I didn't drink because I don't have the tolerance to drink, but I would smoke. It was definitely a time that my parents probably thought I've gone off the rails <laughs> and they can't pull me back. But that is also the time where I was battling with the expectations from my family because I'm definitely a black sheep in my entire family. <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. Being compared to my cousins, who are all very nice, by the way, and are also very smart and scholarly. <laughs> one of them works at Google. The other one works at TD Bank as a risk. I don't know. I think she evaluates risk <laughs> to my brother, who's in pharmaceutical, and even my younger cousin. <laughs> My younger cousin, at the time, obviously she was still in school, but she gets really good grades. And I never, I've never gotten good grades because during high school, feeling accepted was so important to me that it overshadowed the fact that I needed to get good grades. I know it was extremely stupid and that would forever be one of my regrets in life, not doing good in school. If you knew me at that time and if I was a bitch, I apologize <laughs> because I was definitely going through some things. It was wrong for me to have been a bitch, but um, I just didn't know how else to release my emotions. That was when I hit rock bottom. It's very true what they say. Once you hit rock bottom, you can only go up from there. But going up from there was extremely hard for me because during that time I had so much criticism. I felt like I was in that mode where I'm like, oh yeah, if this is what you think about me, well, fuck you. I'm going to be so much better. That was also not a good mindset, mind you. <laughs> but it was what triggered me and motivated me to work extra hard to wherever I am now. My main goal was to prove to everyone that I am worthy, while I should have been proving to myself that it's tough when you had so much criticism coming in, you just become this ball of negativity. You're full of judgment and you're full of skepticism. You're just rolling with this energy because that's the only thing that was fueling you. So obviously I went back to school. I didn't get into a university because of my grades from high school. I got into Seneca. I finished an extended uh, diploma for fashion business. Right out the gate, I was very lucky to get a job to be a product developer. That was my ideal role coming out of school. I was so happy and so stoked that I landed that job. The first company I was going to be in was a department store. I was over the moon. It was my first step to say, yeah, bitch, I did it. That's right. When I was doing product development, it was fine. My manager at the time was a crazy bitch. I just kept on telling myself, it's okay, just deal with it. She has anger issues. This is Devil Wears Prada, <laughs> all good. Like, you know, you're in the fashion industry, baby. It's okay, everyone's a bitch. <laughs> so I tried to live up to that motto, even though it's toxic. And then after when my role was going to be switched out, it was going to go to the States. By this time, I had a new manager and she asked me if I wanted to go to a different position. I told her, yeah, for sure. I would love to try buying. At that time, I interviewed internally with a buyer, which I love and admire still. She took me in and I was her assistant. I was thrown into the ladies wear buying team. Now, this sounds all cool and shit, but damn. <laughs> This is where the real issues came in. I literally felt like I got thrown back into elementary school. Okay, I wasn't bullied, but 
、uh, was trying to find acceptance in this new department. First of all, in buying and ladieswear, I have to say, at the time, majority of them were white, with a few that weren't, but they were very much in the Western culture. For me, I felt like I was an outcast. I grew up in a Chinese household. It was really hard for me to make conversation. I'm an introvert and I'm shy. <laughs> A lot of the times, I feel like there's a disconnect when I talk to them. It was difficult. It was difficult. It's not like it's something that I could relate. When I tell them what I do over the weekend, they couldn't relate, and that's the end of that. That is why I felt like I was thrown back into elementary school, trying to find ways to connect with people again, trying to find ways to get accepted all over again. And the only way, and the only thing that I could do is to do really good in my job. I've always been very hard on myself because I don't want anyone to say I'm incompetent ever again. I don't want anyone to tell me that I would end up at McDonald's and just flipping burgers for the rest of my life. I don't want people to tell me that I can't do something because honestly, anyone can do anything if you try your best to do it. If you have tried your hardest, and if it still doesn't succeed, then you have to let yourself know it's not for you. As I moved through my corporate life, I went to different companies. It felt the same. I still couldn't connect to other people. I thought it was only just because I was in a corporate company. I feel like I could only connect to Chinese people. Maybe because I only allow myself to connect to Chinese people, I don't know 100% still to this day. But I try really hard to not be myself and not be Chinese because I know it's not accepted. When I went to Umbra, I met a lot of cool people. I also met my fiance there. At the time, I'm still carrying on that negative baggage with being really judgmental, being really hard on myself, and not accepting myself for who I am. So meeting him, seeing the world through his eyes, was unbelievable. Seeing the world through his eyes was like seeing the world for the first time again for me. He was so positive, paired with his "I don't give a fuck" attitude. Was mind blowing. All the small things that I thought mattered honestly doesn't even matter because no one gives a shit. I've never felt someone accepting me for my good and the bad and everything that I struggled with. I've never been accepted a hundred percent of myself, and he did that. He loved me for everything that I am. I started to love myself the way that I am as well. It's kind of backwards because you should really love yourself before anyone can love you. But that's why I'm so grateful to have him. With that realization, spending time with him, his positivity and his "I don't give a shit" attitude has definitely rubbed off on me as well. I've learned so much from him that I started to shed and take off all that negative energy one at a time, to a point where now I'm finally breathing. I've been wearing that as an armor for so long that it's so nice to finally take that off and just be me. Truthfully, once this transformation started happening. It didn't stop. I, I keep on shedding that negativity and started thinking outside of myself a lot more to see what I can do to help nurture and provide for other people. Then last year happened with COVID. Health became a huge thing. I started thinking about what I can do to make my health better so I won't catch the virus. Started thinking about what my mom used to say to take when I was feeling a little bit under the weather. It kind of all clicked in, and this is the birth of this audio journal. This is a way for me to share information that might be helpful to you, to create a community for everyone to help each other out. 
to understand our heritage and culture more. For a lot of us who have immigrated here, a lot of that has been lost throughout the years. A lot of you also wanted to connect back with your roots. But like myself, you have a language barrier. Well, this is one way to tap back into your roots. Not only tapping back into your roots, you're going to learn about how to make yourself healthier and maybe shed some light to your parents as well. Drop a nugget here and there, perhaps explain it back to them. First of all, that shows that you've actually learned something because you've digested yourself and you're regurgitating it back to your uh, parents or your friends or whatever. Second of all, you're making connection again. Maybe your parents are mainly Chinese speakers and it was hard for you to make conversation at home <laughs> because they are Chinese parents and they don't really like to talk very much. <laughs> This might be a way to connect back with your family as well. Thank you so much for listening. If you have listened up to this point, I know it was difficult to hear and probably a little intense. I do want to thank you for allowing me to be so vulnerable with you guys because I feel like the only way for us to trust each other and to build this community is to break that barrier for you to really understand me. Maybe some of you do relate to it, some of you might not, but I honestly really just want to put it out there so we could start with this clean slate and start building this community from the ground up together. We could all learn, share everything from an honest place. What I can promise you is that the following audio journal logs will definitely would not be as heavy as this one. It would be a whole lot more positivity as I try to explain the fundamentals of TCM and interview with different practitioners. So stay tuned and I hope you can join me on my next audio journal log. If you like this episode, please give it a like. If you would like to hear future episodes, please subscribe. Or if you have any questions about health, please send me an email at kuko.health at gmail.com, which is K-U-K-O dot health. If you just want to say hi or drop me a DM on Instagram, come follow me at kuko.health, which is again, K-U-K-O dot health. Thank you so, so much for listening to me today. And please stay warm and healthy out there. And I'll catch you on the next episode. Bye.